Hello everyone and welcome back to our Smogus series. Today we're going to be working on the fourth prompt, which is Moth. This is the piece I struggled with the hardest so far, but I think it was worth it in the end. Starting with refining our loose sketch, I had envisioned this guy as being the least dragon-like all the dragons we've had so far. I really wanted to incorporate how fat and fluffy moths can be into this dragon, so he has those things in droves. Really, the only distinctly dragonish features I gave him were his uh, face and feet and some scales here and there. So this guy is based off a princely tiger moth, which are mainly black with a lot of pretty color shifts on their wings. He ended up looking a lot more like a butterfly than a moth in the end, but that's okay. I tried. I ended up going a little overboard with the colors in his wings and that's kind of what threw it, but hey. The intention to make a chubby moth boy was there and that's all that matters. So, I've been really curious about working with masking fluid lately, and I thought this would be a great opportunity to use some since the princely tiger moth has some white spots in their coloration. I figured it would be a heck of a lot easier than trying to paint around those areas freehand. So the masking fluid I got is from Michaels, and it is the Fine Line Resist Pen Masking Fluid. Now I know next to nothing about masking fluid, but this was pretty much the only one they had in the store at the time, so I looked it up right there in the aisle and it seems to have pretty good reviews, so I just went for it. It comes in a little squeeze bottle with a long needle-like applicator for getting in really fine details. When I first used this stuff on a test sheet of paper, it did tear up the paper just the slightest bit when I went to scrape it off. However, I think this was because I didn't let it dry long enough. When I was testing it, I only let it sit for about 10 minutes or less, um, and then I tried pulling it up. And with this piece, I applied the masking fluid in the morning before I headed out, and I didn't actually sit down to work on this until around 9 or 10 that night. So it had been sitting for around 12 hours by the time I pulled it off. Now I'm not saying you have to leave it that long, but I do think you should give it ample time to dry and maybe uh, pre-plan enough in advance that you can let this sit for a while before you actually start working. As you'll see later in the video, it ended up coming off nice and clean, and as far as I could tell, it didn't do any damage to the paper, for which I am very glad. I was a little nervous to use this after the test piece, but I'm really happy that I gave it a second chance and was able to put its shortcomings down to user error. The only bad thing I have to say about this masking fluid is that it did leak out of the screw-on portion of the applicator as I was using it, and it got all over my hands and made the bottle all sticky. Uh, I know I've said it before, but I'll say it again, I do tend to be quite heavy handed, so that leakage could have also been my fault, but I can't say for sure.
this is where my struggles really began, but honestly, I was struggling right from the moment I started to put the black paint down on this piece. Uh, I think this was the first time I've used the black Windsor Newton tube watercolor on its own, so I was not prepared for how blotchy it was gonna it was gonna look going down. So I tried to save it as much as I could, but I think the black part of this guy's fur probably would have gone down much more smoothly if I had used wet on wet. So as for the rest of the colors, I was very quickly overwhelmed by the sheer number of colors I was having to work with here. I think after the hummingbird piece, I got a little too comfortable and ended up biting off more than I could chew. So blending the colors was a nerve-wracking experience because I had to work really fast and also the colors weren't going down as saturated as I hoped they would. So as a result, I kept having to use way more water than I should have and kept trying different shades of paint to see if it would give me the saturation I wanted. So people talk a lot about painting having an ugly stage, but as far as my own work, up to this point, I've never had an ugly stage quite this bad. And I can see why a lot of people tend to get intimidated by it. Like, I was so ready to scrap this piece at this point. Even after I pushed through it and finished it, I was still so salty toward this piece for giving me so much grief that I was just like, I hate it, I'm not even sure I want to post it. And it actually wasn't until I looked at it again in the next day or two that I was like, actually, I really like how this turned out. So pro tip, if you're really hating something you've turned out, just take a little break and come back to it later and see if you've forgotten why you hated it. That works for me more often than I like to admit. I was so afraid I'd wasted a bunch of time and materials doing this piece, but it turns out that my struggling was not for nothing and all I needed was to come at it with fresh eyes. black to the wings really helped with some of the contrast uh, in the wings where it was missing and uh, it also covered up some of the blotchy gradients that happened there. So this is where I actually started to have hope that this piece could be saved. I thought the black spots made the wings look so cool. I was itching to scrape off that masking fluid like the temptation was so real but I knew that there might be more stuff I wanted to do on the wings and also wanted to give paint the paint more of an opportunity to dry so just I resisted I left it and it was hard but I did it so next I attempted to work on the black parts of the fur a little more I've always had trouble trying to do shading and highlights on black fur and I think this is the first time I've actually attempted it traditionally I still have some practice to do with this but I don't think it turned out too bad I wish I would have come out it, it would have come out a little darker but really any darker than this and I would have lost the lines completely and then I have been in even bigger danger so <laughs> um, I think I'm thinking that the trick to black fur is starting with the lightest color and then adding in the darker shades which is like totally mind-blowing to me because it's almost like having to work backwards in the past I've been primarily a digital artist so I'm used to doing flats shading and then highlights, so having to flip the shading and the highlights was definitely a way of looking at things that I'm not used to. But honestly, the whole traditional art thing I've been doing since I started this channel has been such a learning experience, and strangely enough for me, I'm not feeling very frustrated by it. Uh, I'm really enjoying working with traditional media, and every time I find something in my work to nitpick, nitpick at, I don't feel like it's coming from a place of negative self-criticism or anything like that. Um, I'm actually just like, hey, cool, I found something I need to work on. More reason for me to experiment and paint more. So that's been really interesting for me, being that um, I've been lacking confidence in my art in the past and it's been a really welcome shift in mindset to be able to use criticism, especially self-criticism, as a positive motivator rather than a reason to not do the thing, you know? So I love to learn, I love to experiment, and yeah, I'm just having a lot of fun trying to build up my skills. After 
working on the fur, I felt like I needed a break from working on the dragon himself because I wasn't sure what more to do with it, but I knew it needed something. So while I thought about that, I worked on the background a little. I had a lot of paint left over not only from this piece but also from um, the past few pieces I've done. So since I didn't really have a color scheme in mind for the background, I opted just to try and use up some of those leftover colors. The flowers in the back ended up overtaking the dragon a bit because they were so saturated, but I think I managed to fix some of this when I went in with the colored pencils. The pencils were especially effective on the wings as far as pumping up that saturation I didn't manage to get with watercolors. So I was super pleased with how vibrant the wings ended up looking and also super relieved that this was looking more and more like I had envisioned. I feel like the pencils really managed to come in strong in this piece, whereas the other pieces were predominantly reliant on the paint. Um, this one was saved by those pencils. This is another thing I'm really loving about watercolor is the ability to go over it with so many other tools. It's just so pleasant to work with in that aspect because it gives a lot of room for experimentation. And of course, I could not resist going in with the gel pens. The set I have has a bright, almost pastel yellow that I've been finding works really well for highlights. The ink sits on top of everything rather than blending with it, so that's been really helpful as far as getting things to pop. To keep with the glittery slash metallic theme I have going on in the smogus pieces, I used a glittery blue gel pen to um, do some of the lining here. I think it worked best on the wings and gave them this nice magical sparkle. Um, I also used this pen to line the darker areas of the fur, however, it wasn't quite dark enough. After this video, I think the very next day, I ended up going back and using a black glitter pen um, on those areas to make it more contrasty. I'll have a picture at the end of this video showing what that turned out like since I didn't get it on camera, but I think it helped a lot and was the finishing touch that made me really like this piece. Now we're in the home stretch, and I finally decided it was time to take off that masking fluid. It was super easy to peel off, I was able to do it with just my fingers and I didn't have any issues with it. As you can see, it didn't let any of the paint or whatnot get under it and left those areas looking so clean and pretty. I'll definitely be using this stuff again whenever I do another piece that needs it. I did find though that the bright white that was now on the wings made the rest of the dragon look like it needed some more light areas, so I tackled that with my Posca pen and also decided to very subtly tone down the, uh, the white spots in some areas with some light blue shading. I also ended up adding a white outline around our little dragon to separate him from the background some more. And that's it! I hope you guys enjoyed it. This piece was definitely a challenge and I learned a lot from it. If you enjoyed coming along on this process with me, don't forget to like the video and leave a comment and subscribe if you haven't already. See you all next time!